gentlemen, welcome to this week's episode of Demystifying Men with Rachel Davis. Rachel Davis here, along with my very special guest that I've invited onto the show today. And I figured who better to share with you the benefits of the information that we'll be sharing on Demystifying Men than none other than the very man who I have demystified, <laughs> my husband, Johnny Davis. So ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce to you my, my, my better half, my, the love of my life, my boo thing, <laughs> Johnny Davis. Babe, thanks for joining us on the show today. Hi. Thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> so glad you're here. And I'm truly excited for the conversation that we're going to have today. Uh, because who better than the man who I'm married to, to share with you. And in addition to that, I host an annual event titled Demystifying Men. And I think it's very important for you to share with our viewers today, as a man, mm -hmm. some of the concepts that you learned from the Demystifying Men event and how they've impacted you in a way that I think you're best equipped to be able to share with our viewers today. So, welcome to the show. All right, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. So, let's start off. Let's start off our conversation by sharing with our viewers today what is it like to be married to the Relationship Whisperer? <laughs> <laughs> Do you really want to know? Inquiring minds want to know. <laughs> okay, so being married to the Relationship Whisperer. Yeah is absolutely what's the word i want to say <laughs> amazing <laughs> fantastic <laughs> fantabulous all of that all of that amazing and a bag of chips and a bag of chips and a glass of wine <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness no seriously though and i know i put you on the spot but um i've learned a lot in regards to men i've learned a lot in regards to relationships and my purpose and intention from learning that information was so that I could be better positioned to be a better wife. Mm -hmm. And that was important to me because I was previously married, um, failed marriage, divorce. I've made some mistakes along the way and I wanted to make sure that I didn't have another failed marriage under my belt. So for me, getting this information in terms of better understanding men, would help me show up for you as a better wife. And so share with the viewers um, how that information has translated to you since what I've learned, you know, you've been my guinea pig. <laughs> Before I decided to share this information with the world, you've yeah. been my guinea pig. So share, share with us what your thoughts are. Benefits, pros, cons, good, bad, maybe not the ugly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think, for the most part, mm -hmm. you know, you've always been a wonderful, loving, warm, kind person, you know, from the very first day that I met you back in 2003. I mean, we've yeah. known each other for 17 years, but we've been married now for 10 of those years. Yeah. And I, I can honestly say, without a shadow of a doubt, you have always exemplified what it means to be a wonderful, loving spirit. I think what I can say from my vantage point in terms of you gaining this new knowledge and understanding men better, yeah. I think it just enhanced our communication mm -hmm. and you were better able to understand me mm -hmm. as I was better able to under understand myself right. because I was not aware of some of the things that I had been going through and I wasn't able to kind of pinpoint exactly what it was or explain it, articulate it. And when you share that information with me, I was able to see my growth. And I think that made or put you in a position where you were better able to understand where I was in my development. And that overall improved our communication. And it just brought us that much closer. You know, we would never arguing and fighting and anything like that. I mean, we've never had an argument no. in the 10 years that we've been married. We have and some people might say, well, really? You guys don't argue? Man, it's, they full of crap. People argue. They argue. They're not perfect. I'm not saying we're perfect. We're not. But there's a way to talk 
to someone. There's a way to communicate mm -hmm. with someone without hurting someone's feelings. And, or, you know, just uh, saying something that's mean spirited that you can't take back once you say it. You know, we've never, we've never done that with each other. So I think overall, with you just gaining this new information, it just further enhance your ability to communicate with me, understand me. And as a result of that, it just made our relationship flow that much better. Because I think communication is the ultimate glue that keeps a wonderful relationship wonderful. Right. And, you know, watching you and hearing you say all of those things really just brought a, a, a tremendous smile to my heart because, you know, we have not argued. We've been together for a long time, 17 years, as, as you said, we've known each other and we've been married for 10 out of those years and we've never argued. And yes, I attribute a lot of that to the fact that we know how to communicate with each other. We don't necessarily trigger one another. Um, we don't intentionally desire to hurt one another and we respect each other and each other's wishes and boundaries. And so from the bare bones, from a foundational perspective in terms of communication, I think we're doing a pretty good job at that. I would have to agree. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we talked a lot about communication in terms of one of the things that the attributes, characteristics of our marriage that works well for you. Do you think the communication um, skills that I've acquired as it relates to understanding men is the only thing that you can attribute to us having a solid, amicable, <laughs> loving marriage? Well, as I said before, mm -hmm. I think communication is the glue. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of the reasons why couples, relationships fail, mm -hmm. and what have you, aside from, you know, infidelity right. or, you know, financial issues, you know, things of that nature. I think one of the, 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 the real culprits or the main reason why a person's relationship would go south, if you will, is because there is a lack of communication somewhere. And I think that because you're great at that and you've only enhanced that with the information that you've learned. It's just, like I said, it's just made us that much closer and that just makes our bond that much stronger because you would never, you weren't a difficult person. We weren't trying to make each other happy, if that makes sense. You know, like you are already a happy person and I was already a happy person and we just brought our happiness together mm -hmm. and, we be, and we became happier as a couple. You were looking for me to kind of save you or change your life or make you whole and vice versa. You already came to the table whole. You came to the table understanding that you are enough and that you are a great woman and that you're intelligent. So you come to the table with all of that. So when you think about all of these other things that sometimes people have to contend with when they're developing their relationship, these are some other areas where they may fall short and they may falter. And that may be the reason why they don't win as a team, as a couple, they don't thrive. They never get to, to, they never get to the point where they have that strong bond and that strong connection. That was never an issue right. with us. So I can honestly say that um, communication has just made it that much better. It's just made it that much easier, you know, for me to understand you and understand your needs. You know, it's just, it's a two-way street. You understand me better, but I also understand you better. And I kind of stay in that lane. It's just like, I use the example of giving a car what it needs in order for the car to function. Yeah. So if you have an automobile, you have a car, and you know the car takes gas it takes you have a high-end car and it says on the gas tank that it needs 93 octane unleaded fuel well that's what it needs you have to give the car what it needs but you may not like gas you may like water <laughs> and you want to put water in your tank well okay 
Well, I may like water, but water is not going to make the car go. Right. Water is going to make the car malfunction. And if the car is malfunctioning, now my needs can't get met. So I understand that in order for me to get my needs met, that I have to meet yours. Right. And that comes through understanding how to communicate with you so I know exactly what those needs are. And you also understanding what your needs are so that you can tell me what they are. Absolutely. Because I'm not a mind reader. Absolutely. And to that point, I think a lot of couples really struggle with that. Women in particular and men, you know, you'll find that a lot of men are not able to clearly articulate themselves sure. and articulate what their needs are. And a lot of women aren't able to do it as well. And that, I think that's simply because folks don't necessarily take the time to understand what their needs are. You're mm -hmm. just constantly and continuously going through the motions as opposed to taking the moment to sit and look introspectively mm -hmm. and say, well, what are my needs? Yeah. Are you basing your needs based off of what you were taught your needs are? Mm -hmm. Or are you basing your needs based off the fact that you're in tune to yourself to really know what it is that you need? So yeah. I think that that's a valid point. Absolutely. I mean, I've heard so many times over the years when people used to say, I need to take time so I can get to know me. You know, I got to do some soul searching. You know, I really got to discover who I am. When I was in my 20s and I heard that, I didn't understand what that meant. You know, I would say my response would be, well, what do you mean you don't know who you are? You're an adult. You should know who you are by, by now at this stage in your life. When in fact, most people don't. You really don't have that true in-depth spiritual understanding of who you are because you're still developing. You're still responding to external stimulus. You're still responding to your environment and you're experiencing new things and you're still processing it. And you're, you're baking in the oven, so to speak. You're not fully baked yet. And it takes time for a person to really understand what it is that they need. It takes time for them to, to discover who they are. And once you do that, once you discover who you are, and then once you discover what you truly need, and if you're able to articulate that, you get to the point where you can articulate that. And kudos to you because what you're going to do now is let that other person know, well, this is what he needs or this is what she needs. And now they have a decision to make. You know, can I meet that person's needs for the rest of their life? Do I want to meet that person's needs? Right. You know, which is the bigger question. Right. Do I want to do it? And if the answer is yes to both, then I think you can have a successful union. Absolutely. You said something that was key. You talked about development as far as being a man is concerned. You talked about development in terms of not knowing what it is that you want as an adult in your 20s, right? And I'm sure we can both agree what it is that you desire in life, in partnership, in a marriage, overall in your 20s is very different from what it is that you want in your 40s, sure. right? So we talk about that at the Demystifying Men event, the stages by which men develop and by which men evolve. But he can alter his opinion for the person that he loves. Doesn't mean that it takes away what he thinks of himself. It doesn't dilute his opinion, but he understands the power of love and will reign and rule in an effort to ensure that love supersedes even his own sense of self. That's a real, that's the king that the kingdom loves. So my question to you is, where were you when we first met? What stage do you think that you were in where we, when we first met? And what stage do you believe that you're in right now? Well, do you want me to tell you what those stages are? Because <laughs> I thought that you really want people to kind of like, you know, tune into the show. I so do. They learn. No, I do want them to tune into the show. But let me let me help preface this for you a little bit better. And I think this will help our viewers, in particular, the women. When you and I first met, you were at a stage in your life. Well, let me. Okay. So, all right. Yeah. Let me, let me let me cut you off there. Okay. I was at a stage in my life when we first met where I was just really just 100% focused on making money. Mm -hmm. And I was focused on having fun. I was fresh out of a divorce myself. And I got married early in my early 20s, not really understanding who I was and what I needed 
And I truly believe that I got married for all the wrong reasons. The first time. The first time. You know, yeah. I thought that I was doing the right thing, but I didn't, mm -hmm. as it turns out. You know, so I look at that as a learning experience, a learning lesson. And I took some time from that divorce. I took over 10 years to just really find out what it was that I wanted in a person who I am, mm -hmm. who I needed to be in order for me to attract someone like you, and which ultimately I did. And once I was able to meet someone like you, now I had to grow into a better person to be able to keep someone like you because I didn't want to make the same mistake that I did before, or I didn't want to take you for granted or waste an, a great opportunity with a great person because I was emotionally immature mm. and, and didn't understand, you know, who I am and who I was as an, as an individual. Therefore, I couldn't understand and appreciate the value of someone like you. So I had to learn that. I had to grow through that. So when you and I, when we first got together, I was at that stage where I'm, I was still fresh out of a divorce. I'm still growing I'm still developing and I wanted to take my time to grow because in order for me to be the man that I am today for you, I had to evolve. Right. You know, I had to evolve. Remember, you know, you know, we, I was we've there. known each other for 17 years. I was there. Right. But yeah. we got married 10 years ago. <laughs> yeah. So during that time period, when I, when I decided that you were going to be my wife, I didn't propose. I just told you that we were going to do it. Yes, you did. You said we're going to get married. And this is going to be the date. You sure did. And this is what's going to happen because by that time I was fully baked mm -hmm. as a mature man, as a mature adult emotionally. And I knew exactly what I wanted and I knew exactly what I needed. And you met all of those needs. So... In my 20s, yeah, I had to go through that. I was, I was young, I was growing, I was evolving. And many of us sometimes, some people mature faster than others. Mm -hmm. Let me not make a blanket statement because I'm, not, I'm sure there's a viewer watching right now, there's some viewers watching right now that say, you know what? Well, I got married when I was 19 and I'm now 50 and we're still thriving and we're still, we're still, we'll still have a, a great relationship and blah, blah, blah. Yes, absolutely. Those things happen. Do they happen every day? No. I think those are special situations. And if that's your situation, congratulations to you. You are an example for many people out here that are looking for a great relationship or a great example, you know, of a relationship, great relationships. But then there's others that come across people in their, in their youth and because they're emotionally immature, get married for the wrong reasons, focus on the wrong things, and they mm -hmm. decide, you know, I'm gonna get married, whatever. Or they have a child or children early on and they think, well, the next, the best thing I have to do now, I have to get married now since we have kids. So how do you feel about that? We're getting married just for the sake of having kids? Yeah. Or because you have kids? Or because you have kids. Um, I don't think that works. I personally, um, getting married just because you have children, and this is my personal opinion, mm -hmm. I don't think that necessarily is the best thing to do all the time. And I know for a fact, because I have friends and family members of mine that have done that, uh, and it didn't work out. Okay. Yeah. okay. It, didn't, it didn't necessarily work out, you know, in, in those situations. And so, uh, but I will never tell anyone not to do it. Right, right. Because that's right. not for me to make that decision. Right. But my personal opinion, I don't think that's the case. I think sometimes what happens, you know, people get in situations and um, they're doing adult things and adult <laughs> things happen and they Maybe may not so. necessarily be intentional it may not necessarily be intentional um, and just because that happens society says well you know you can't have any bastard children right or you know having kids out of wedlock right it's like the worst thing that can happen right so in order to kind of rectify that well, I, we need to go ahead and get married. And I just don't think that's necessarily the best thing to do. I think sometimes people have a better time co-parenting 
you know, or if they if they grow to that point, if they get to that point where they feel like, okay, I have a child or I have children with this individual and I want us to be a family unit, if you're emotionally mature enough to get to the point to make that decision, you know, with that person, then I would say, go ahead and do it. But my personal opinion, I don't necessarily agree that that's the best thing to do. Got you. Good to know. And I figured that we can expound on that topic a little bit because I do too feel the same way as you. And I do see a lot of couples, especially young couples, get together and get married simply because of the societal pressures that is bestowed upon them as a result of, as you said, doing adult things and having adult consequences. And and in in a lot of instances, that's, that's having a baby. And so now you're fundamentally stuck. And I know this may not necessarily sit well with a lot of folks who um, are faith based in terms of their relationship. And I'm not saying that we don't have God in the midst of our relationship. However, what you're going to learn about in demystifying men is you're, we're going to teach you and take you through stages of, of, of understanding men and ladies of even understanding yourself that goes above and beyond what we learn from a biblical standpoint, what we learn based on the doctrine that we're learning, that we've learned from a church. So tune in. You're not going to want to miss the information that we're going to share in subsequent um, episodes because we're going to delve in deep. So with that being said, I want to ask you another question with regards to another component that I've learned in relation to men. I wrote about it in my book titled Demystifying Men. And we talk about the four major archetypes that resides within every man. So within every man, you have the lover, right? The lover is the gentleman that is, you know, all about love. He's all about emotions. He's in tune to his feelings. He's in tune to yourselves. And let's face it, ladies, men that lead with the lover archetype are exceptional lovers. They're just forever giving of themselves and they, ex- they, they receive extreme pleasure by giving pleasure. The second archetype is the warrior. Now that's the man who's the, who's the provider and who's the protector. Now, most of us, we're familiar with the provider and the protector, but that's just one archetype of a man, the warrior, the provider, the protector. You know, he's the one that has to have the boundaries established and this is my kingdom. And he will do everything in his power to provide for you and to provide for your children. But that's the persona, that's the archetype he leads with. The third one that we talk about in the Demystifying Men book is the magician, also known as the intellect, where these men are mentally stimulating and and they're very cerebral and their existence resides within the six inches in between their ears. If it doesn't make sense, then it can't make dollars. Just to give you an example of just how these men just function and they lead with knowledge. Now, having a man leading with knowledge is a great thing. You know, usually these men are in technology, they're engineers, and they're often able to really provide a beautiful living uh, for themselves as well as their family. And the fourth is a beautiful combination of all three, which is the king, right? And so I'm sure our, our listeners are interested in learning from you, which archetype do you lead with? And how have I been able to support that archetype based on the information that I'll be teaching in Demystifying Men? Well, let me just say this. Yes. <laughs> you didn't marry me for my cooking. <laughs> Love a man, no. Uh, <laughs> oh no, I'm just, just kidding. Just no, kidding. I did not marry you for your cooking. <laughs> Even though I can't cook, though. Okay. My baked chicken is amazing. Yeah, right? baked chicken with the mixed vegetables, right? Right. <laughs> And they're going to be the shells. Uh, oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Inside joke. Uh, so without giving too much away. Right. I would say that um, the, my, 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 I won't even call it my default archetype. I would just <laughs> say my natural archetype for me has always been warrior. And, um. I guess that has a lot to do with my upbringing Mm -hmm. and my environment Mm -hmm. where I grew up Mm -hmm. and 
the type of love that was shown to me mm. as a young man. It wasn't a warmth kind of love. It was a be strong warrior, protect yourself, protect your environment type of type of love that was that was shown to me. So as a young man growing up, I think I am I embodied that. And so that just kind of followed me from my youth all the way up to my adult years. Wow. And how have I supported the warrior in you? You support the warrior in me because you don't try to be the warrior. Mm. You allow me to be me and allow me I to do I do not that. try to be the warrior. Yeah. Not at all. You allow me to do what I do and, and let me be me. You don't try to, you know, I, I am an alpha male. You don't try to out alpha the alpha. <laughs> and which is key because there's a lot of people, you know, if you have an alpha male and, you know, there's an alpha female, sometimes they can kind of butt heads when the alpha is trying to out alpha the alpha because they, you can't have two alphas in the same environment right? without having some type of clash and conflict. Right. And so I think you allow me to operate in my space and be in my space. You recognize it for what it is and you just let me do that. Right. As I continue to evolve and grow. Right. Now there are a lot of wonderful benefits. Um, having a man who's a warrior as your husband, as your man, as your support partner. I mean, you take care of so much. You make it a point to ensure that you do provide and you make it a point to ensure that you do protect. But I want the viewers to also know that you do have the lover <laughs> persona as well. You're quite the lover behind closed doors. <laughs> uh, you're definitely an intellectual. Uh, you are so stimulated and you're constantly learning and you're constantly seeking to learn, which is also something that I found to be extremely attractive about you when we first met. We had conversations that I'd never had with any other person before. And so I appreciate the intellectual side to you. I appreciate the magician. And I think from a King perspective, you certainly do have a healthy balance of all three archetypes. And I'm excited to say that I've got a fully formed King in my life. Now, if you want to know more about that, you definitely have to get the book Demystifying Men and you can grab your copy today on Amazon. So in wrapping up, I'm excited that you decided to, uh, to come and have this conversation with me today. I'm, I'm excited that you were open enough to want to share with our viewers. So I want to take this opportunity to thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for talking about Demystifying Men. Thank you for letting our viewers in and giving them a sneak peek as to who you are, who, who we are, and how the information that I've shared and that I teach in regards to demystifying men, how that supported you in our relationship. Any parting words? Thank you for the invitation. <laughs> <laughs> and it's an honor to be your husband. Oh, it's an honor to be your wife, baby. I love you. I love you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's our show for this week. Tune in next week as uh, we discuss part two and how tragedy happened in our household and how we're happy to know that he is a miracle. We've survived it and we're here to tell our story. Stay tuned and I'll see you next week.